This right here is exactly what we're going to be making today. It's AI generated art that will turn into this parallax effect for the web. So let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. I started out by issuing this prompt to Midjourney, stylistic art of a warrior looking out from a cave. It generated this image, which I think worked out quite well. You want to identify objects that can be cut out and layered for the parallax effect to work. Now the next step of the process involves cutting out those objects and I'll use Photoshop for this. This is the original image that I got from Midjourney. Um, and I'm gonna to toggle some layers here in Photoshop. Um, as you can see between these two pictures, I made some changes. Obviously I cut out the character right here, but I also cut out this element right here, this little um, kind of like I don't know, stone thing, as well as this column over here. Um, that looks like this. So I also cut out this part. All right, so we have this. Let's just start with this background. This is gonna be the first actual layer that we're gonna use or the image that we use. On top of that will be this element. On top of, or inside of this will be this element. And then finally we have the soldier. All right, so you're gonna see a time lapse of me doing that painstaking work of cutting out everything. Um, you just use, there, there's a couple different tools you can use like object selection tool that can kind of quickly cut things out, but sometimes it doesn't do a good job. So you'll see me most for the most part just using the path tool. There's probably quicker ways, but I am not a Photoshop expert. Um, so uh, basically at, at the end of this, we're gonna save each one of these uh, as a PNG. Now this one is doesn't need to be transparent, so it could be a, like a low quality JPEG file. Um, and you just could hit Control, Shift, Alt, S, and you could just change this to JPEG and make it low like 30%. Um, it'll still be like 100 KB at this size. Um, but then we wanna take these ones that have opacity and save those as 24-bit PNGs through the same method. These are gonna be massive, but then you can take them into tinypng.com, each one of those, and it will greatly reduce the file size by about 80% on average. All right, let's go ahead and watch the quick time lapse, and then we'll jump into the code. All right, so here I am in Visual Studio Code. We have an index.html. We're linking up a CSS forward slash main.css file right there. Um, let's just quickly take a look at the HTML because there's not much of it. We have three sections, one, two, and then that's the primary section, and then three. And that just gives us enough room to be able to scroll to see the effect on the top and bottom. These are gonna be 100 viewport height, each one of these sections. Now, additionally, we have um, a wrapper inside of this just to hold all four of the elements. The actual wrapper right here is gonna have a background image. It's gonna be the first image is going to be um, this bg.jpg, which is this one right here. And then the second one, um, ignore this text mass thing right here for now. The second one is bg2. Uh, mountains and soldier. So I'm not using the image uh, tag for these. You probably could do that, but I just chose to, we're gonna use CSS to put those images in to those elements. All right, now let's go ahead and look at our SAS. I don't have all of it right now, so the file actually just looks like this. It's butt ugly, there's nothing there. So I thought it would be pertinent though to cover the main CSS parts before we jump into the JavaScript. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, inside of here, we're gonna gain access, create a rule set here with the selectors of BG2, Mountains, and Soldier, all right? So for those, uh, which are the three that are nested inside of section container right here, we're just setting them um, to the width 100%, transform origin center, because we're actually gonna scale this for the parallax effect. You could typically move them up and down on the X or Y, or on the Y axis. Uh, it depends on the effect that you're going for. Um, height, 100 viewpoint height, and position absolute. So then what we're gonna do is take um, all four of those images. And the first image that we're going to be um, applying this bg.jpg to is the wrapper element, all right? So that's gonna be a background. And so I'm gonna paste that rule set right there. I know there's quite a bit happening. <laughs> so basically, um, on the wrapper with the 100 viewport width, um, we're using position relative as well. Um, that way we can take these elements which are nested inside of wrapper 
I and position them accordingly. Um, the background's right here. Background size, I'm making it slightly larger. Background repeat, no repeat as well. I found I had to do that, otherwise there was some repeating in certain areas. Z index is zero, because remember we want this the very back. Um, aspect ratio, 16 by nine. If you, if you remove this, it'll kind of just break the whole thing. Margin zero auto to center this area and then text align center because we do have a, a bit of text. All right, so if we save that, I'm not expecting to see too much. Sorry, that's the wrong window. Yeah, we don't see anything just yet. Just, just hang tight. <laughs> all right, so after that we have BG2, all right? So BG2 is just the background, Z index three with 100%. Um, we have the same thing here for mountains pretty much, except we're just changing mountains to uh, .png, Z index two. And then also we have our soldier, which is Z index two, height, 100 viewport height, same old stuff here. And then finally, we're gonna select these three selectors once again, because we're using the background. We probably should have just used the background image property right here. Like, you know what, let's do that. I'm gonna refactor my code. It makes more sense to do what I was about to do right here. And then what we're gonna do is just, we're gonna take these two elements, background size, 100% background repeat. Oh, sorry, we need to put that there. There we go. Um, no repeat right there. Okay, so we save this. It's gonna be what well, I thought it was gonna be, almost ready to rock, but apparently I am forgetting something because um, nothing apparently has been changed. So let's figure this out. I'm gonna leave this in here just because I I want to see you I want you guys to see me stumble around trying to figure out what in the hell is happening. Like, because I'm I'm starting to debate myself: is the CSS even being included? Well, it's being watched. All right, so open with live server. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there was something clearly going on there. All right, so not quite ready. It's look at this. We have the H1. It's the H1 is actually throwing stuff off. It's not working correctly. So we're gonna paste in that those rule sets as well. And there's actually quite a bit of them, unfortunately. Not quite a bit of rule sets, but quite a bit of properties in those rule sets. So H1. Here's what we're dealing with. Um, position absolute, Z index six, we want it on top of everything, margin zero, because H1s, especially at a font size of three rem, has a lot of margin. Padding zero, colors white, tops 50, transform, translate, Y, negative 50, this is just to, to get these centered up, basically, because it's position absolute. And then nothing else too exciting happening. Um, we do have a text mask element right here. It's the H1 itself with a class, and then a span inside is the text. So we put overflow hidden to create that sort of reveal effect that we're gonna use. And then finally, let's get that. Span is just gonna be display block. We have to apply this, otherwise the effect won't work. Uh, we won't be able to move it um, with GSAP. So let's go ahead and now go back. There we go. This is pretty much what we want. It's pieced together here. Although I see this is clipped off at the bottom here, so We'll revisit that. Let's go ahead and get this working. So first things first is I would go to Google, type in GSAP 3 CDN, um, and you'll be able to check out the first result, which will give you a code snippet. Actually, let me just show you, because some of you are gonna be newbies about it. GSAP 3 CDN, don't be too lazy, Gary. All right, so it's this one, the top result. We just click this middle tag right there, the script tag, and that will give us this, all right, this big lengthy script. All right, additionally, we're gonna use scroll trigger from that same result, which is right down here, scroll trigger min. We'll copy that. Now scroll trigger is gonna allow us to actually, you know, the scroll trigger works in conjunction with uh, green sock right here. Um, and you'll see how that comes into play. Um, we're also gonna use a smooth scroll because just because it makes the effect nicer. And this is gonna be from Lenis, all right? Lenis, L-E-N-I-S, smooth scroll. Uh, so if you type Lenis um, Smooth Scroll in Google, you'll find the installation instruction. Just You can just grab this from the code pen, which is linked in the YouTube description. All right, next up, we'll do some just JavaScript right here in our index.html file. The first thing I wanna do is get the Smooth Scroll, roll, uh, screw, smooth scroll work, working. Uh, they have an installation page and it's just super simple. It's these lines right here and it will work right out of the bat. There's options you can specify here. I'm not specifying any. 
I like Linus because it's not actual scroll hijacking like some of the other smooth scroll libraries are. So you can see now it has a nice smooth scrolling effect. Okay, now after that, let's go ahead and I'm going to paste in some consts, some variables here. Um, I've got a background one, which is wrapper, background two, which is BG2, mountains is mountains, soldier, soldier, H1, and we're just grabbing the span specifically for all those. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is create a timeline um, and inside of it, a scroll trigger. And the way we do this, here's how this works. Const TL, let's make this large and big and large and beefy. Uh, const timeline equals GSAP timeline. All right, and when it takes options, when you create a timeline, by the way, you can just do default, but because we want scroll trigger, we're gonna attach a scroll trigger to this timeline when we use it, all right? So it'll essentially mean whenever we use this timeline, it will only uh, activate those animations based on this scroll trigger properties, based on where we're scrolling and how far we've scrolled. Uh, scrolled. So trigger is the first pro uh, property that you need. So the trigger is going to be wrapper, which is right up here. All right, so right here, basically it's where this starts, this whole section starts. All right, so that tells us, all right, this is around the point where we need to do something. And the next property is going to be start. Well, this one works in two different values, and it's a string format. So we say, in relation to wrapper, we're going to say when the top of the wrapper meets the bottom and then we can go ahead the bottom of uh, i believe it's the viewport we can go ahead and start uh, the animation i may have screwed that that description up we're going to do scrub one which will make it so that any animations that we define in timeline i uh, they're tied to the scroll position and not just time itself if that makes sense and if it doesn't just take this out and see what happens uh, to see where what what's happening here, we could put markers true. This is just a temporary thing for development. So if we save this, we're gonna see up here. So scroller end, we see scroll start, and that's right where trigger, the trigger class is. Now, we don't see anything happening because we haven't yet defined actual animations. So for that, let's go ahead and get this set. So before we get to that timeline animation, we can just say gsap set soldier scale 0 0.8 that simply means what it says and we're just going to set the scale which is a short for transform uh the, the css transform property scale property so we're just scaling the soldier down a little bit and that was just something i just wanted to do based on the effect uh just make it a little bit smaller than default now now we're going to say two mountains we're going to scale the mountains by 1.4 or 140%, and we're, we're also gonna push it down on the y-axis by 30 pixels. Also, make sure you spell mountains correctly, Jesus. All right, let's try this now. Okay, um, scrolling down. All right, so it looks like I need to specify overflow hitting because this is not supposed to happen. Don't worry about that for now, but we can see the effect very cool looking indeed now let's just add one more and that is for the soldier so we're going to say uh two soldier we're going to scale 1.7 so we're scaling him more so because he's closer y90 and when we put the um a third parameter here and we put zero that means it's going to happen at the same time as this the way the timeline works by default is uh this chained to beneath the first one will wait for this one to finish but we want these to happen at the same time so we just put a uh, a comma and a zero right there so let's save this all right looks like overflow hidden i uh, maybe i forgot to apply over here somewhere so let me go look at that real quickly and all right, that's actually really strange because I refreshed and it's the problem has fixed itself. Like I don't see the issue at all, even despite changing the uh, orientation. But yeah, um, one final thing is this: the uh, the warrior awaits. Okay, let's let's go ahead and get that situated. So I uh, over here, 
we can create, I just wanted to show you another way to create um, a scroll trigger. And we don't even have to use a timeline. We just have one element, the H1. Um, and you could probably add H1 right here and, and, and get it to animate as another two method. But I wanna do it this way, GSAP from H1. So whenever you're using um, GSAP or a timeline, you have the method to or from, which means you're gonna be animating the H1 element where it currently stands from a new position, all right? Or if you go to in these cases, it's gonna be wherever they are by default currently, and they're gonna to go to a new value. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, what we're gonna do is put Y percent uh, 100. All right, so the H1 is targeting the span element, which holds the type. And we're just taking it uh, on the, the Y axis, moving it up 100%, which means because the H1 element has text over, or I mean, has um, overflow hidden, then we're not gonna see it. Scroll trigger. The trigger is gonna be H1 itself, the span element. Start top bottom, scrub one. All right, let's save it. And this should be it. So, scroll down. The warrior awaits. Could probably make that uh, text larger, but we are pretty big right here, so there we go. Now, of course, we take off the markers. Save it. And there we go. That is the effect. Very, very cool stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to check out designcourse.com. Also, designcourse.com forward slash AF. This is where you can enter your email to be notified when the advanced front ends course releases. We're gonna be learning JavaScript, Greensock Animation Platform, Barba.js, and even 3.js to build breathtaking interactive UI. So that's gonna be coming sometime this year. And of course, check out designcourse.com. We already have our interactive UI UX course and CSS course. Top level stuff, very, very awesome. Anyhow, hopefully you enjoyed that. Make sure to subscribe here and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.